Hey guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Hope everybody's having a good day. I want to do a short video here uh, showing a program that you can use to either create your own patterns or uh, take my patterns into and edit them uh, as you need. Uh, the name of this program is Inkscape and it is a vector graphics program kind of like uh, some of you might want to call a CAD program only this is more for uh, illustrators than it is for uh, designers. Uh, this program is free, it's open source, it's available for Windows, Mac OS X and Linux so it'll work on any of your platforms. Um, I personally use CorelDRAW which is a, uh, not a free program and it's relatively expensive if you go with the pro version so uh, this program is used by literally hundreds of thousands of people all over the world it's very well supported um, it's not my favorite program because I'm used to CorelDRAW uh, so this video is not meant to be a tutorial on how to use this program I, you know I'll let you use your own devices for that um, but I do want to show you how you can take my patterns and import them into this program so you can edit them like you need. Um, my patterns, when I produce them, they, are, they end up being PDF files, which is normally a file that is designed to be uh, spread over the internet. Uh, it's kind of the best way to think of it. So I'm going to open up uh, Inkscape right now and show you how to import my files. The PDF files I produce, the patterns in those files are still vector graphics. And for those of you who are not familiar, a vector graphic is basically a mathematical um, equation, so to speak, of the graphic itself. In, in other words, it's not just a drawing, it's actually a set of coordinates uh, to represent that particular object and what's so neat about that is you can scale those graphics or edit them very easily and the program that you use to do that will just re-manipulate those uh, numbers to make the pattern uh, do what you want it to do. So without getting into too much detail on Inkscape or how these programs work I just want to show you how to import one of my patterns into this program. So I've got Inkscape open here now and this is the window you'll see after you first download it and install it on your computer and I'm going to go ahead and make the screen full screen here and if you have one of my patterns you go over here to file you go to import and then you scroll to wherever you save that file at either say on your desktop or in a directory where you save these files and let's find one here let's go with uh, something that's fairly straightforward let's do this 2 by 4 PDF when you click import and select your file this screen right here will pop up and basically this screen is asking you how you want to import that particular pattern if you look over here on the right you see the cover page of this pattern we just opened and over here on the left we can select the pages in this case we've got page one selected out of a total of five pages so what we can do is click on these up arrows and we don't really need the picture of the project and there's another picture we don't need but once we get to page four and page five those are the actual patterns that we want to import. So get it over here in this case page 4 which is part of the pattern and at this point all you have to do is simply hit OK and it will import that pattern page into Inkscape but it's not quite ready to be edited yet. Uh, it imports it in as a group. In other words the text, the car or the truck body, uh, the uh, wheel wells and all that are all one individual group of items right now and to edit these particular groups we have to ungroup them up here in your menu bar you have a little icon right here that says ungroup selected groups so if we click on that and now you can see we can click on each of these individual objects and they can all be edited so in this case if we wanted to stretch this out we could if we wanted to make it bigger we could okay so we're able to edit this particular object to anything we need we could also go back in and say like add custom uh, names to a pattern you know we could use their text file or their text requester over here to like say add a name to the side of this truck or whatever we wanted to do 
Uh, so it's not too complicated to import my files and basically what I wanted to get across is that when I produce the patterns and I export them out to a PDF, the actual pattern pages themselves are still vectors. The good news for that is you can uh, use the vectors on CNC and laser machines. So all the people out there that follow me in the laser and CNC community, probably most of you know this, but if you don't, this is the way you can get my patterns into that format that you need for those machines. So I know this won't be uh, of use to a lot of my readers, but uh, there are a significant number of you who do like to edit these patterns. And if you haven't found an easy way to do that, this is the simplest way I've found. For those of you that uh, have never tried to design your own scroll saw pattern and you want to give it a shot, this would be a good program to start with because again it is free and it's very well supported. Now like all these vector graphics programs there's a steep learning curve to them so you're not going to jump into this program and on the first day uh, be confident in how to use this program. Um, you'll find on Inkscape's website there's tutorials also if you uh, want to wade through it there are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of tutorials on YouTube uh, so if you just go to YouTube and type into the search box Inkscape uh, you're gonna find pretty much everything you need you're just gonna have to kinda weed through it uh, it's a good program um, in my opinion it's a little clunky which is why I don't use it uh, and you know, it, everybody has an opinion on these things. Some people love Inkscape, some people don't. I'm in the I'm in the category of it's great for the price, but uh, it's difficult for me to use because I'm so used to Corel Draw. So I hope this was at least a little bit helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.